All right, today I want to talk to you guys about how to export or how to require modules within Node.js. So everything you build with Node.js is going to be built on modules. Now a module you can think of just as an individual JavaScript file, and then you import the bits and pieces that you need. Some modules are built into Node, like the file system. So if you wanted to use the file system with Node, you could just do this. And here we have a variable that I can use, fs, that's going to represent the file system. And this is the name of the module from Node. It's part of the core modules in Node. We're bringing that in so we can use it in our file. Once some of the methods, you can see there's a whole bunch of methods that'll come up. Read file, read file sync, or write file sync. All of these things are available to us because we required that module. Now our file has it. Now, it's not just the node modules that are built into node that we can use. We also create our own modules. So here I have our file right now, app.js that we're working with. And in the same folder, I've got another one called module1.js. You can call the file anything you want, just like you would with any other. Here, it's a JavaScript file inside of it. I've got two variables, f and x. Both of them are functions. If I wanted to use this code, inside of app.js, I would import them. I would say, I'm going to bring in something called f, and I'm going to require it. Now, here you can see I've just put the name for the core node module, fs. If it's one of my own, I have to provide a path as well. So I'm going to say, starting in my current folder, module 1. This is the file that I want to bring in. Now, I can write it either with the file extension, or I can write it without. So either way, this is going to work with or without. So I'll leave that there, just comment it out. I'm going to bring it in without, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now, I have imported something from this. Right now, f represents the entire file that I'm bringing in. This whole thing is going to be a module. I will have access to everything inside of here but it depends on what I export. So we have to, at the bottom of our file, module.exports equals. And then I decide, do I want to bring out both functions or do I want to bring just one of them? If I do this, I'm only going to be exporting f. x will be considered to be a private function inside this module, only visible inside this module to other functions. Now. That's fine, we'll start with that. I'm bringing f in here. That's what I'm gonna put into this variable. Because I'm only bringing this, and I haven't specified a name here, alternatively, we could have done this, and I'll show you the difference in a moment. Exports.f equals f. So I'll show you the difference between these two in just a sec. Let's do it this way first. Now, this represents the one thing that got exported and that was that function f. So if I run it, now let's open up the terminal here, and we'll say node app.js, we'll run that. There we go. The function f from inside module one, that works. If I want to export this way, I'm providing a specific name for something that I'm exporting. However, now that I've done this, I'm back to having this as an entire module. If I run it now, I get an error. The problem is this now represents the entire module. If I want to call that function f, I have to do something like this. There we go. Now it works again. So that was the entire object, the entire module. We could say mod, and then in here, mod.f. That's my module. I want function f from inside that module. Great, it works. Back in this one, another way we can do this that does the same thing as this is module.exports. And then I put an object here. Inside the object, I can pick and choose what I want to bring out. So if I want both f and x, I specify them inside of the object. Now, Again, we've got mod, but I can call mod f and mod x. 
both those things. There we are. So there's F and X. Both ran. I was able to bring both of those things in. All right. Now, back to this and why I left the .js off. Let's look at the example with module 2 here. Now, this is just a folder. I've got nothing inside of it right now. But it could be a module that somebody else wrote that I downloaded from NPM. I've installed a module on my computer. So let's clear this. I'm going to go into that module 2 folder. And let's say that this was a node module. So I'm going to say npm init dash y, take all the defaults. There we go. I've created it. Now there's a package.json file inside this folder. It's a node module. And right here, we have an entry called main. This is sort of the startup script. We can call it anything we want. Let's say I'm going to call it Bubba. Now, what I've said here is that inside this folder where this package.json file is, there should be a file called Bubba. So Bubba.js. There we are. And inside of here, let's create another function f. There we go. Or right, actually, let's use a different name just in case we don't want to conflict with anything else. So here's my function, console log, function y, okay, and we'll do our module.exports to say that I want to export y. We could have other things, again, that could be private. So let's create something pi 3.14. There we go. Now I've got something called pi. This is a constant. It's a variable that I could export if I wanted, but right now I'm just going to bring out y. All right, back to our app.js. If I wanted to use this, one way I can do this, we can say require. We're going to import something. Starting in my current folder, I'm going to go into module 2 and then bubba or bubba.js. I could also say bubba.js. And this would work either way. Now I can call that function y. I'm going to go back up one level and we will run this again. There we go, the function y, it ran. Okay, great. But there's a shortcut for this. Because in my package.json, because I defined main as being this file, all I have to do to make this thing run is actually, come back in here, comment this one out, do another copy of it. I can leave that off just like that. Now I'm pointing to a folder. I don't know it's a folder, but Node will figure out that this is a folder. It will then look inside that folder for a file called package.json and check to see in this file, what's the entry for main? Okay, this is the file right here, bubba.js. That's the one that we're going to go to to get the export to use back inside of here. So we're back to this one. Run it again, and it still works with this approach. And this is why we leave the .js off. We need to start it with a file path to say it's something local, it's in our project, it's not one of the core node modules, but if you use the package.json, you don't have to specify a file name at the end. You just have to point to the folder, and it will consider this to be the module. Okay, just a couple other variations that we're going to do. Going back to our module 1, so I'm going to close these other ones up. Back in module 1, I wanted to show you a few other variations. Now here, I've exported all of the things in this file. We can say const p equals 3.14. There, now I've got a number and a couple of functions. I can export all or some of those in my object. Now, all three of these things are being exported. So when I require module one, I'm getting all three of those. Now, if I only needed two of the three things. Let's say I only needed the function f and 
the constant variable p. If those are the only things I want, an alternative to this could be just like destructuring. It's not destructuring, but it works and looks the same sort of way. Inside of here, we're going to say, I want those two things. I don't care about anything else that was inside of that file or inside that module. The only thing I need is the function f and the value p. Now with these two things imported, the f and the p, these will actually be two variables that I'm using. So we're not going to use the x. We can comment that one out. But console log p is a value. We're going to be able to get that. And now, instead of this being an object with f, because I've got the curly braces here, I'm saying, okay, this is the object inside of it. F and P are the two things I want. This function and this value. I can save that and we can run. And there we have it. There's my function F. There's my value. So we can destructure it right here. We can wrap this in. We can do it as sort of a default name, or we can provide individual names we could be saying things like module.exports.x equals x, module.exports p equals p. So you can bring them all out like this, but it's much faster if you do it this way. You're getting the same pieces, but it's a single line instead of having to repeat and explicitly list off every single element that you want to have. Okay, so back into our FTS. So you can see that we've got several ways of bringing modules in. Core ones, we just specify the name. If it's ones that we've got on our system um, in our directory structure, then we provide a path and then the name of the file or the folder. So module one, module two, one's a file, one's a folder. As long as you've got the package.json package .json file inside that folder, you'll be able to bring in the file. And that's it. That is the basics of how to require and export modules within JS, Node.js. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.